Survival, survival, survival. It gets you every time, doesn't it? You, you just sing that survival song, you're going to just get bowled over by a disco ball that's going to take you right out. So, it, But people just want to survive. You know, people say, you know, after they've been through a, a tough time and people go through a tough time and they sort of zero in on the tough time and, and they, they say, well, I'm just hanging in there. And I want to say, let go. You might be surprised what would happen if you start something new instead of hanging in there. And I'm doing the survival thing. Uh, w- w- this morning I want to talk about seeking attitude reformation. And as uh, we seek attitude formation, we, uh, uh, it, it will serve us well and serve those around us well uh, when we fix our minds uh, with a vibrant, optimistic, positive, uh, successful life which is far, far better than survival. So that's what we want to talk about this morning. Uh, William Arthur Word, uh, in an endeavour to encourage people to live boldly rather than tentatively sort of hanging on to mediocrity and trying to survive, said, if you're wise, you will forget yourself into greatness. So that's the message for this morning. You'll forget yourself. He says you'll forget your rights, but remember your responsibilities. Forget your inconveniences, but remember your blessings. Uh, Forget your accomplishments, but remember your debt to others. Forget your privileges, but remember your obligations. Follow the example, he says, of Florence Nightingale, of Albert Schweitzer, of Abraham Lincoln, and forget yourself into greatness. I'm thinking about that, you know, your privileges, your privileges, right of way. I'm going to take my right of way. Well, you can take the right of way. Sometimes there'll be a big truck coming and he's going to, going to be worried about that and you'll get killed anyway taking your right of way. So forget your privileges, but remember your obligations. Someone else said, empty yourself into adventure. Empty yourself. General Douglas MacArthur said, there is no security on planet earth. There is only opportunity. To laugh is to risk appearing the fool. To weep is to risk appearing sentimental. To reach out to another is to risk involvement. Uh, To expose feeling is to to risk exposing your true self. Uh, To place your ideas, your dreams before the crowd is to risk their loss. To love is to risk not being loved in return. To live is to risk dying. To hope is to risk despair. To try is to risk failure, but the greatest hazard in life is to risk nothing. The person who risks nothing, does nothing, has nothing, and is nothing. So we're talking about a little bit of danger this morning. Uh, Someone said the man who never made a mistake never made anything. You think about that. A few mistakes are in my house, I've got to tell you, in my life. So I just want to say, go on, take a risk, take a risk. Uh, Someone said, go out on a limb, that's where the... Big fruit is, uh, and the risk is, uh, the risk that I want to talk about this morning is the risk of admitting that you need an attitude change. An attitude change. Attitude, attitude, attitude. He's just been always talking about attitude. That's all we get. We come to church and we just get about attitude. That's all we get. Well, right there, you've got a nasty attitude if you're thinking like that. So we, we, we want this morning. We, that's, take a risk this morning and admit that you might have, need an attitude change. And then, then once you've done that risk, the next risk, and you'll need another risk, is the risk of doing something about changing it. And Jesus spoke about this issue. John 12, 24, 25 in the message, Jesus said, Listen carefully. Unless a grain of wheat is buried in the ground, dead to the world, it is never any more than a grain of wheat. But if it is buried, it sprouts and reproduces itself many times. In the same way, anyone who holds onto life just as it is destroys that life. But if you let it go, reckless in your love, you will have it forever real and eternal. Uh, The Apostle Paul understood this principle, Galatians 2.20. He said, I have been crucified with Christ, and it is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me, and the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and delivered himself up for me. So let go of surviving. Let go of surviving and take a risk. Uh, The risk of admitting 
uh, perhaps that you may need an attitude change and the risk of doing something about it. Uh, attitude, 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 and we've all got one. It's whether it's a good one or a bad one. Now, in order to, to do this this morning, to process this, uh, I want to talk about, number one, uh, the choice within you. The choice within you. Number two, the opportunities around you, and there are some. And number three, the God above you. Uh, we are either masters or victims of our attitudes, and it's a personal choice. Who we are today is the result of choices we made yesterday. And what we will become tomorrow uh, relates to the choices that we will make today, what we will choose today. To change means to choose change. You're going to have to make some choices, hence my heading, the choice within you. And so let's have a moment right now. Guys, this is tough. It's in church, and you've had a hard week. But let's have a, a moment of absolute honesty. Let's have a, a reality check. Uh, let's evaluate our present attitudes. And I, I just want to give us an opportunity to do that because we don't want to stop, really. That's the problem with doing quiet times and journaling and all that sort of stuff. We, we don't really want to stop because we've got busy stuff to do. And right now, let's get on with the service, Gordon, because it, no, we're going to stop. We're going to bow our heads, close our eyes, I'm going to seek the face of God. I'm going to pray and I'm going to let the Holy Spirit of God touch our hearts, touch our minds, touch our lives. Father in heaven, just want to spend some quiet time before you. Holy Spirit, just want you to come and visit us in our hearts, in our minds. Alert us to where we need an attitude change. Holy Spirit, we want you to bring the honesty factor to us today. Holy Spirit, cause us to be absolutely honest with ourselves as we evaluate our present attitudes. I just want to be quiet before you now. Father, we want to take your word. We want to take your voice whether it comes through your book or through the gentle whisper of your voice. And we want to be, be better people because of following what you say to us. Thank you, Lord God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, how will we evaluate? Well, I think we've begun the process and we will do the evaluation by identifying problem feelings within ourselves, uh, about ourselves, and about others. So, you know, how are you really feeling about yourself? And I, I talk to any amount of people, uh, whether in this church or beyond, and people feeling bad about themselves because of something that happened to them in the past, and they think that they can't be like someone else, or, 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 or that they can never measure up, that they can never have a measure of uh, success or influence, uh, or that they're just not up to the mark, and that, that's how they feel, and that's an attitude thing. So firstly, how are you feeling about yourself? Secondly, how are you feeling about others? You know, uh, and the others usually are the significant others. The, your parents, you know, you never got on with your parents. They didn't get on with you. Or, or the people you wanted to be your friends and they just, they, they, they didn't treat you like you would have wanted to and so you don't feel good about those people, you know. Uh, so, so that's the first part of the evaluation. And then following on from that, uh, identifying problem behavior. How have we responded to other people or situations? On the road, when they cut in on you. On the road, when they tailgated you. You know, how, how did you respond? Uh, ha have you been positive or negative toward others? You know, that, that's, that's an evaluation of your attitude. So how will we evaluate? We will evaluate by identifying problem thinking, uh, a negative or negative pessimistic fault-finding, fearful thinking, 
Think about that, where you didn't want to do something, you held back, your attitude held you back, uh, and you were negative about this or that or the other. Now, discover uh, in your evaluation what the Scriptures teach about attitudes, and they teach lots about it. That's why we have able to do four messages, and we could have gone on and on forever. And, and to help us do that, I, I just want to say that this is the fourth message in the series. They've all been recorded. In fact, uh, you can get them, you can either order the CD over at the information desk afterwards, or you can go on our website and get the podcast. The messages are there for you. That's why we do that so you got it and uh, and in last week's it actually was a, a video 